Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on Monday Night Raw and uh, two matches for Superstars. And they are also taping the SmackDown tapings as well. And the other remaining Superstars uh, matches for uh, th uh, Thursday and uh, Friday show. As a normal Tuesday's uh, events were canceled uh, due to the forest fires in the area. So they canceled the show and uh, are doing it tonight in Denver, from Denver, Colorado instead. So, and as normal, the breaking news, or some WWE news, WWE has signed the man that gravity forgot, PAC, a.k.a. Benjamin Satterley, to a developmental contract, according to Mike Johnson of PWInsider.com. Rumors are funny, PAC wrote on his Twitter page which neither confirms nor denies the story. The 25-year-old British wrestler has appeared for TNA, PWG, DG USA, and Ring of Honor in the United States. He's talented, high flyer, and it will be interesting to see whether he's fast-tracked to the main roster. And the original source came, uh, came from Mike Johnson from PW Insider. Uh, happy birthday goes to the developmental wrestler Richie Steamboat, the son of Wicked the Dragon Steamboat. Real name of uh, AKA, other known as Richard Blood Jr., turned 25 on this, this past Saturday. He was born July 7, 1987. Former WWE wrestler Mark Merrill turned 49. He was born July 9, 1963. Former WCW wrestler PN News, AKA Paul New. Is 46. He was born July 9, 1966. Yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. Uh, the following matches are advertised for t tonight's 11 p.m., which is already over by now. Uh, Central, uh, air, uh, Central Time airing of the AWA on ESPN Classic. Larry Zabisco versus Todd Becker. Colonel De Beers versus Yukon John Nord. Texas Hangman versus Jake Milliman and Todd Becker, the Destruction Crew, versus Paul Diamond and the Trooper for the AWWE Tag Titles. Well, uh, WWE has, al has also offered De Sarah, Sarah Del Rey a developmental contract, according to Mike Johnson of PW Insider. She is cur currently undergoing her pre-signing medical tasting. Del Rey isn't your typical diva. She's a great worker who has uh, had, had, had standout matches for Shimmer, Ring of Honor, Shikara, and elsewhere on the indie scene. It's encouraging to see the company hire someone who wasn't cut from the usual diva mold. He was hoping to ha uh, have something in mind for her, and she doesn't spend much time in developmental. Original source for that, that item came, also came from Mike Johnson of PW Insider. WWE legend uh, Kevin Nash turned 53 July the 9th. 1959, he was born, and as can be seen on the big screen in two current films, he plays a stripper in, in uh, Magic Mike, the movie, and a security guard in Rock of Ages. Former WWE Champion Bob Backlund was uh, backstage at the Pepsi, Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado, the location of tonight's Raw li li uh, Live, Raw, and SmackDown tapings. And I guess he's gonna gonna face none other than uh, sent uh, uh, from uh, uh, Heath Slater to Wendy's Poster Child, and uh, he, he surely does, as you will uh, hear in the results. Uh, uh, WWE sta uh, star The Rock announced via Twitter he is returning to TV. Raw's 1000th episode. Rock wrote. The People's Champ returns, as promised. My goal, the WWE Championship. Rock didn't didn't say definitely what he will, uh, how he will appear in person. I assume he will he will be based on that tweet. Uh, but nothing is official. Update: It was announced on WWE Raw that Rock will appear live in St. Louis. Okay, the following results are. Uh, for superstars was uh, his po uh, thanks to Nick Trombetta and Scott Stevens. They were they were at Raw and posting the results for superstars. 
And here are the two matches. Hulico defeated Justin Gabriel. Hulico definitely got more heat. And Gabriel got, got cheers. And a decent back and forth action. Several near falls for Hunico. Hunico wins with a nice rollover pin off the top rope after Gabriel Gabriel reversed a superplex. Match number two, Alicia Fox and Caitlin defeated Beth Phoenix and Natalia. Wow, the the, the the girls of destruction were back together. Not much of a, a, a react, good reaction to the entrance, but pretty decent reaction to the to entering action. Uh, Fox and Caitlin won with a, uh, with a nice classic small package by Caitlin on, on Beth Phoenix. Pretty decent Divas match. Uh, Scott noted that it was a very sloppy match. And now for what you've all been waiting for, Raw from the USA Network. Live from Denver, Colorado, the Mile High City. The show opened up with a recap of uh, Sam Punk, Daniel Bryan, and AJ Saga. Michael Cole gave a brief introduction, and then AJ's music hit. Cole saw a height of the episode of the, uh, this being the 998th episode of Raw. Jerry Lawler was on commentary with Michael Cole. Uh, once AJ's music stopped, she, she noted that she will be the special guest referee of the WWE Championship match at Money in the Bank. And she's quoted by saying, I realize that my actions can greatly affect the outcome of this match. Then she said uh, she thought of that, that being overwhelming and very emotional. AJ got the what treatment. She smiled and asked the fans to join her in welcoming CM Punk. Slight delay. Uh, and then uh, Punk's music finally hits after about a minute and a half. And he walked out to a big reaction. Uh, CM Punk asked AJ, what is this all about? She recalled Punk saying she's unstable and needs professional help. Well, I don't, AJ said. I'm in full control of my faculties at all times. AJ acted like she was on the verge of, of tears and no one has ever cared about her or shown compassion for her like he did. She said that she knew that, uh, what she had to do and uh, when she kissed him. AJ said Punk's eyes and, uh, sent love straight into her heart and he fills her up with passion and desire. In essence, you turn me on, AJ said. Punk squirmed a little bit. And now I know what I have to do, and she continued. AJ backed away from Punk and then dropped down on one knee. Guess what? Booze from the crowd. And cue the... Uh, Popped the question. AJ smiled as she looked uh, up at Punk, CM Punk. And she said, CM Punk, will you marry me? The crowd erupted with a uh, mix of cheers, booze, and yes, Borgasm chants. Daniel Bryan ran into the ring yelling, no, 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 repeatedly. Bryan said, AJ is, is about to make the biggest mistake of her, of her life, and he can't allow her to do it. He said, Punk doesn't love her, and he, he's merely playing playing her because she's the referee on Sunday. Well, Brian said he knows that he hurt AJ in the past, but he never stopped having feelings for her. He said Punk only cares about himself. Punk said Brian doesn't know the first thing about him or how he really feels about AJ. Brian said if if, he, if that's the case, he, he, should, he should say I do. Well, Punk squirmed again. Brian told AJ that he sees her as a special referee, whereas he sees her as a special person. Well, Brian said he and AJ are also are so connected that uh, they had the same idea. He said that when he, he woke up, he didn't intend to stop a personal, I mean, uh, stop a pr proposal. He intended to, to make one. Well, then Brian dropped to, to one knee and asked AJ to marry him. Whoa, 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 says Punk. What a load of crap. Uh, Punk asked Brian wh wh where the ring is if he really planned this. He said Brian is a liar. Suddenly, the anonymous general manager email chimes. Da ding, da ding, da ding, da ding. Well, Michael Cole shows up and said, May I have your attention, please? Cole saw walked over to a covered podium and he took several minutes to unveil it, uh, revealing the GM podium with the laptop. Cole saw announced on behalf of GM 
He's running raw tonight. The GM, uh, Phil's Punk and AJ made a great couple. So he booked Punk and AJ. Hmm. Uh, against the team of uh, Brian and Eve, Brian threw a fit and said he he wanted he and AJ should be partners. Jim chimed in again and said AJ may or may not see Brian in a different light if he beats Punk. AJ said that he, the entire thing is really confusing. She said she knows she knows Punk was surprised by her proposal and was surprised by Brian's proposal. She said they all need to think. She said she's happy that they, they they have a match tonight because she believes that everything happens for a reason. She then said she has a feeling that she's going to walk out of the arena with uh, her future husband. AJ skipped to the back as her music played. And the announcers hiked to Chris Jericho and Big Show versus John Cena and Kane for later in the show as they go to commercial break. And I was thinking that that was going to be the main event. Well... I was disappointed. It should have been the main event. There was more more excitement in that match than it was in, in the actual main event, which was Punk AJ Saga and Brian uh, Brian Saga. Okay, well, the segment really dragged, uh, and, and there were some long gaps between AJ's lines early on. Brian was a, l a little mere over uh, over the top than usual. Two proposals in one segment. One can only assume that AJ will li leave. With Brian, since they, they made it seem like uh, the WWE Championship is in jeopardy heading into the pay-per-view. Meanwhile, the return of Jericho will probably lead to a big brawl to establish that. It, it's every man for himself on Sunday. Which, in the end, that was that's very true. Highlights aired from the SmackDown versus Alberto. From SmackDown, when Alberto Del Rio repeatedly slamming the car hood on Sheamus. And the first match of the night was Sheamus versus Jack Swagger in a non-title match. Sheamus finished off Swagger real quick with a bro kick. That match didn't even take a minute, like 50 seconds. After the match, Alberto Del Rio appeared on the big screen while honking his car horn. And the match was so quick, I fell asleep. And uh, during that that match, I didn't even wake up till mid midway through, through the second hour. And I'll let you know uh, when I woke up. <laughs> from that, from it, well, Del Rio said he's going to take the World Heavyweight Championship. Del Rio climbed inside his car. Seamus turned and nailed Swagger with a broke kick, and as Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez drove away. Well, happy to, happy we got those annoying World champ, Champions out of the way early on, so we can get get plenty of John Cena tonight. Well, wasn't much of that either. Backstage, Zack Ryder talked about serving a general manager of SmackDown, or actually a Zackdown. He told uh, Santino Marella that he has mo more of a personality than the Raw general manager. Santino dressed like Sherlock Holmes uh, throughout the show, and he's going to find the anonymous general manager sometime tonight. If Santino actually finds the general manager, then one can only see, assume that it will, will be something comedic. And probably not what they originally had in mind for the uh, general manager. Honestly, I don't even care anymore as long as they lose uh, the tie that loose end once and for all. Well, everybody knows that they, that particular one was Michael Cole, anyways. But not for tonight segment. Well, the announcer spoke at ringside and hyped the Rock will be it. We'll be live in St. Louis. They also hyped that Brock Lesnar was also appear that night to answer Triple H's challenge. And don't forget, that's the 1,000th episode in two weeks. Match number two, Dolph Ziggler and Tensai with Sakamoto versus Tyson Kidd and Christian. Vicky Guerrero joined the announcers on commentary. Late in the match, Sakamoto distracted the referee. Meanwhile, Tensai splashed Christian in the corner and followed up with a back suplex for the win. Tensai roughed up Tyson. At ringside after the match and power bombed him onto the ring apron. That entire match took a minute and a half. Dolph Ziggler and Tensai defeated Tyson Kidd and Chris in a minute and a half. They sh uh, that should have been you, Sakamoto. I root for Tensai's opponents with the, the hope that I'll get to see Sakamoto get, get, get his ass kicked. At ringside, 
Cole Saw said he's he's voting for the anonymous GM to host Raw and SmackDown every week. Lawler said he'd have Teddy Long run SmackDown and Mick Foley would run Raw. Cole got got worked up and knocked a cup of water out of out of Lawler's hand or onto Lawler. Uh, Cole apologized and was saved by the the GM chime. Yet again. Uh, this can't be right, Cole Saw says. There's no way I'm reading this tonight. Lawler went up to the podium while drying himself off. Lawler announced on behalf of the general manager that Cole will, would face Lawler in a WrestleMania rematch. Okay, the GM chime, chime sounded again. Lawler announced that the GM was letting the WWE Universe decide whether the match will take place. He encouraged viewers to visit WWE website to vote. And the outcome was later on the show. So we get Coleslaw versus Lawler on the go-home show for the money in the bank. Wow, that'll sell a thousand pay-per-views. Uh, Brodus Clay and the Dancers made, made their entrance for the next segment. And match. Brodus Clay with Cameron and Naomi versus Drew McIntyre. After Clay's dance routine, the camera showed McIntyre sitting at ringside with his back uh, to the dancing. McIntyre went, went for a top rope move and jumped into Clay's battering ram headbutt. Clay followed up with a splash for the win. Clay danced with the kids afterwards. And that match took 35 seconds. Apparently, the anonymous general manager is, in, is the same guy who books the new NXT based on the length of the these matches so far. Uh, backstage segment uh, with Santino searching uh, do, sir, uh, his search took him to Chris Jericho who said he hates the computer. Jericho asked uh, how he's supposed to know that Santino is at the Raw Gym. Santino asked what, what if Jericho is right and then stormed off. Big Show entered, the, entered into the picture. Jericho talked about how they were one of the greatest teams in, the, in WWE history. Uh, Big Show said some of the some of the most embarrassing moments in his career came out came as he was a part of, of Jericho. He said Jericho should stay out of his way so he doesn't knock him to the, knock him out. Announcers hyped the main event tag match and said viewers would hear from John Cena after the break. And they get a, a commercial break. Well, and then they had a a, a flashback. Stephanie McMahon looked back on her wedding with Triple H, uh, which Hunter called her a lying bitch uh, and uh, punched Vince McMahon and knocked the set over. But wait, didn't uh, didn't Steph just talk about Shane McMahon uh, training Vince McMahon as one of her favorite Raw moments? Couldn't they find someone other than Stephanie to stroll down memory lane? Just ask Rey Mysterio. He, he's not doing anything lately. John Cena made his entrance and cut a promo about Money in the Bank. He talked about the, how the match was great, uh, has great risk, but unbe has unbelievable rewards. Cena said Money in the Bank is a must-see event because the person who gets the contract always, always, always cash, uh, cashes in to become champion. Unless the contract holder's name is Mr. Kennedy. There, I, I wrote it. Uh, now spare me the, the Cena correction emails, folks. Cena said Big Show will be stopped by his hand. This I promise. Cena said uh, he will do whatever he has to to win Money in the Bank. I, John Cena, will win Money in the Bank. Cena yelled. Kane's music played and he made his entrance for the tag team match. Uh, I woke up about halfway through this match. Uh, Cole Saw said Kane will set a record by competing in his sixth Money in the Bank match on Sunday. Coleslaw hyped the, the Raw Money in the Bank match as the most prestigious in history. And the Hills made their entrance, uh, John Cena, uh, which is match number four, John Cena and Kane versus Chris Jericho and Big Show. Cena got the better of Jericho early on, so Jericho tagged in show and fled to ringside. Uh, show ended up going for a choke slam. Cena fought it off and tagged Kane into the match. Kane uh, starts off with uh, some punches in. But Show got the better of that, uh, the better exchange, and tagged in Jericho. Kane blasted Jericho with an uppercut and then tagged Cena into the, back into the match. 
Said he walked over Jericho, then got distracted by the referee while Show took a cheap shot at Cena heading into the break. There yeah, was just a uh, uh, a chop to, to, the, to the throat chest area as they went to commercial. After the break, Cena went for a body slam on Show, but his weight was uh, too much and Show got a two count. Uh, later, Cena tagged in Kane back into the match. Kane, Kane roughed up Show and got a two count. Uh, show avoided a top rope move, clothesline, and uh, then spared Kane, uh, spared Kane for his act, for his reaction. Jericho was then tagged in, and he, he put the boots to Kane and healed it up to get some heat from the crowd. Show took a cheap shot on Kane as a, as as they cut to another commercial. Uh, back from commercial, Kane ultimately made a hot tag to Cena, who hits a signature spot. Shoulder blocks, five knuckle shuffle, shuffle, and then kicked two off the apron. Jericho went for the walls of Jericho, but Cena avoided it and hit the wall, hit the attitude adjustment. Cena went uh, went for the cover, but Cho pulled him out of the ring as the referee called for the de disqualification. And that match took 16 minutes 35 seconds. Well, after the match, Cho ran uh, Cena into the barricade and then closed on Kane. Show, show reached underneath the ring and grabbed out a pair of, la of ladders, one smaller than the other. Show wedged Jericho between the ladders and pressed down, slamming the, uh, the one ladder on, uh, on the top of Jericho. Uh, Cena grabbed the other ladder and rammed, rammed it into Show a few times and cleared glitter for the ring. And then Cena celebrates that in the ring. A solid TV match, given the limitations of the of the big men. Kane seems like an after afterthought. Uh, they continue to establish that the show is a superior to Kane, and they didn't even bother to have the have Kane attack Cena after uh, Cena clear, uh, cleared the, the show from the ring. Kane was more entertaining than and, and better utilized in the AJ drama than he he is in this Money in the Bank match. Well, at ringside, back at, uh, back at ringside, Cole and Lawler set, set up a replay clip before the opening segment with Punk, Brian, and AJ. Cole saw hype the, the voting for his his match with Lawler as they go to commercial. And in a graphic, when they come back from commercial, a graphic noted that Raw has aired more episodes than Seinfeld, Friends, Cheers, and Fraser combined. Uh, they go backstage, uh, Punk warming up when Eve entered the picture and wished him luck. Good luck to you, too, getting all that spray tan off after the match. Punk responded uh, to Eve <coughs> and asked her what, what she was talking about. AJ said, uh, I'm talking about AJ, uh, she said AJ is highly emotional and she'll do whatever it takes to make sure Punk doesn't leave with the WWE Championship. If she doesn't hear the words, I do tonight. Then he mentioned that Punk has held the belt for several months. She said he, he's been overshadowed by The Rock, John Cena, Triple H, Big Show, and Brock Lesnar. But AJ? That must be pretty emasculating, he said. Punk showed frustration after he left the picture. Okay, and then back uh, another backstage segment, Santino continued his search, and it led him to to a, uh, a cell phone. Kali reached out and uh, took the phone away. He asked if uh, Kali was the general manager. Kali said yes. He, uh, he asked again, and Kali said no. Santino asked a third time, who's that? Kali asked. Uh, Santino stormed off as Kali what wandered aloud who the, who, who the cell phone belongs to. Well, Sakara made his entrance uh, for a SmackDown Money to Bank qualifying match. Announcers previewed the SmackDown match and then the show headed to commercial. Uh, the announcers hyped that Kofi Kingston and R-Truth versus Hunico and Kamato will be the pre-show match leading into the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Match number five Said Carl versus Heath Slater. In the SmackDown Money in the Bank qualifier, uh, qualifier match, Said Carl hit a what a move 
according to Michael Cole, for the win. And that match took about a minute and 45 seconds. And after the match, uh, I guess beating uh, Doink wasn't enough to put Slater in contention for a spot in Money in the Bank match. Well, after the match, uh, Slater said, that that isn't fair. It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair. He demanded that a former champion come out, and he wanted to challenge him, and he said he, he could beat him. I guarantee it. Well, that cues Bob Backlund's music to, to play. Cue the, uh, the crickets. Bob Backlund walked out and looked around and then smiled. To all the publicans in, in, the, in the arena, Cole ran through Backlund, uh, Bob Backlund's credentials as Backlund played to the crowd at ringside. He said he was saying that Bob Backlund is, uh, had uh, one, of the, one of the longest runs in, uh, as champion in WWE history. Back and continued to play the uh, play to the crowd. Once he entered the ring, he did his uh, uh, famous duck walk. A, a group of fans chanted, "You still got it!" I heard like maybe fan, five or six fans in the crowd because uh, the, the crowd the crowd wasn't even actually into the match. They they, they were just saying, "You still got it!" because it was almost dead silence. Uh. Well, Bob Backlund offered a uh, uh, offered a handshake, uh, handshake to Slater. Slater kicked him and knocked him down. Backlund recovered and, and applied the chicken wing finisher. As there was no referee, uh, Backlund eventually released the hold and played to the crowd. As Heath Heath was uh, actually tapping out big time, as his, his corny music was playing. Backlund's corny music playing. Okay. Like I said, it wasn't a referee, so what What kind of match was it? Or what, it wasn't even enough of a match before a referee to even get in the ring. Yeah, uh, Coleslaw then uh, asked the results of the poll, which revealed 75% of the fans voted for the match. Cole said the fans were hypocrites who say they don't want him to wrestle, but yet they, they continue to vote as a show which commercial. Uh, dear 75%, I hate you right now. Uh, you think this match uh, brought ratings? Uh, I'd, I'd been turning the channels if there was a, uh, any, anything else on. Uh, Josh Matthews and Booker T took over commentary and said that uh, they, were, they were among the 75% who voted for the match to take place. So you got the SmackDown announcers uh, commentating this match. Match number six, supposedly, as a uh, counted as a, as a match because it's a referee involved in it. So you get Jerry Lawler versus Michael Cole. Cole duck, uh, centers the bell ring. He duck, ducked to ringside when uh, Booker stood up and immediately threw uh, Cole back in, back into the ring. Lawler picked up Cole and performed an airplane spin. He spun around like ten to twelve times and. Uh, uh, laid him down and pinned him. Well, the GM chime sounded. Matt, uh, Matthew stood up and took control of the uh, uh, the computer GM. And to, the, and to the blatant interference by Booker T, he, he is reversing the decision. And now the winner of the match is Michael Cole. Well, Michael Cole saw is uh, doing his cheerleader dance, uh, cheerleader dance in the ring. Congratulating himself that he won the match, and that match took about one minute. As uh, Cole saw celebrating, Santino Morella's music hit, and out, out he comes, and Cole saw wasn't happy at all. Santino says he searched everywhere in the building, and there was only place left to search, and that's under the ring. <coughs> well, the Raw GM podium uh, started chiming in again. Uh, Matthews is still at the podium, and uh, he, he reads it and said, No, I'm not. There's absolutely no one under the ring sending emails. L leave the ring now. That's an order. Well, when they said that's an order, that, that gave me the cue at Sergeant Slaughter. But wait, no, nah, he's backstage. He's an agent. And they too, he wrestled uh, over the last couple of weeks. So, well... Swerve, Santino went to ringside and was pulled under the ring by unknown. You couldn't even see a hand come under the ring. Well, Lawler uh, pulled Santino out from underneath the ring and along with Hornswoggle. 
and a laptop came along with, with him. Cole, uh, uh, Lawler asked if Hornswoggle was the person who called caused all the misery. Lawler, Lawler said that he, he should put Hornswoggle over his knee and give him a spanking. Wow, I'm pretty sure that doubles as uh, Lawler's uh, pickup line. Hornswoggle then kicked Lawler in, in the chin and then uh, bent Santino on the ass. Cole, Cole laughed and tried to uh, get a, a high five from Hornswoggle, who then kicked Cole as well. Hornswoggle got some cheers as he headed to backstage as they go to commercial. So, they're, they're pertaining as uh, Hornswoggle's a GM. Blech. Very terrible. Okay, you might as well say, say the Brooklyn Brawler was, was the GM. Hmm. It's important to note that uh, medicinal marijuana is legal in Colorado, so that probably explains why that group of fans was cheering. I've already said that I won't even complain if the anonymous general manager payoff doesn't make sense because I just wanted to, the, the loose end to be tied up well, once and for all. That being said, there are going to be some uh, viewers who will be more pissed off uh, that they brought back, they brought it back and delivered the horrible reveal. Then that they were when they when WWE creative just forgot about it. Oh, and how does any of this nonsense supposed to sell anyone on Money in the Bank? Uh, if you can answer that, uh, comment back in my videos. Highlights in here of Zack Ryder winning the SmackDown Battle Royal. And the announcers hype that uh, Ryder will be the general manager of Friday SmackDown TV show. At ringside, Coleslaw asked Lawler if they could finally put everything behind them. No, Lawler responded. Introductions for the mixed tag, tag main event took place. As they go over the 10 o'clock hour, match number 7, CM Punk and AJ versus Daniel Bryan and Eve. Bryan jumped out to an early advantage and threw a series of kicks at Punk. He yelled the Borgasms after each kick, and the crowd responded with no, no, no. And the women tagged into the match. AJ got the better of their exchange. Eve tried to tag Brian into the match, but he dropped off the ring apron. Uh, Sam Punk and AJ defeated Daniel Bryan and Eve with uh, 3 minutes and 15 seconds into the match. After the match, AJ hugged, hugged Punk, who didn't. Returned the favor. Instead, Punk gave a big thumbs up to the, to the camera. Brian interrupted and said over the mic that he, he just proved she means more to him than, than any match. He asked AJ to leave with him to get to get married. Well, and a, AJ eventually got, uh, uh, got a pinfall victory over Eve. That's how they won the match. Okay, Punk grabbed the mic and uh, said he's not going to lie to AJ to save his WWE Championship. Punk said Brian is using her because he thinks it will help him win the WWE Championship. Punk said he doesn't care uh, care if what he, he's about to say costs him his WWE Championship. But he's not, go he's not going to marry her. AJ got emotional. Punk said that if that hurts AJ somehow, then he's sorry. But at least he cares enough about her to tell her to, to her, tell her the truth to her face. The fans chanted Punk's name. AJ slowly t uh, walked toward Punk, nodded and slapped him across the face. Brian was shown laughing and, uh, and says, "Come home, AJ." Brian said, "AJ," well, uh, as Brian said, "Come home, AJ." AJ walked toward Brian and teased, hugging him, only to slap him in the face as uh, as she left. AJ stood between Punk and Brian in the middle of the ring and smiled. Then she did her yes routine and exited, doing her skip, skipping routine to the back as the music played. And she looked back at Punk and Brian, who was going to be the champion come Sunday. Lawler asked to, clo uh, asked to close the show. Uh, they chose to keep the mystery of AJ's allegiance going rather than to have her Walk out with Brian to, to, to tease what the WWE Championship is, is in jeopardy. I enjoyed the final segment, and I'm curious to see how that, how they play it on Sunday. But, but they really need to move on to a new chapter at, at Money in the Bank. Overall show was a mess that, that failed terribly. 
to increase my interest in Sunday's pay-per-view, it did no, nothing of the such. And that ends my uh, Raw for this week and Superstars. Stay tuned tomorrow night for SmackDown results. And the dark matches uh, from tonight. Thank you. Peace out. Enjoy your, your Monday, the rest of your Monday night and Tuesday, and stay tuned for SmackDown tomorrow night.